Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. As you can see here, I have some kitten drawings in my sketchbook. Now, a little while ago, some friends of ours fostered six kittens for two weeks, which is a lot of cats. They had a special kitten room in our friend's house where they had to stay and they couldn't get out um, because otherwise they would be all over the house causing trouble. So it was actually a really good setup for fostering kittens, um, keep the chaos contained, uh, but it also kept sort of the cat concentration contained. So I wouldn't say on, an, on a normal day that I'm allergic to cats, but I am allergic to six cats in a small area. So we visited them a few times. They're so cute. Uh, there were a few times where I was almost convinced that I was going to keep one of them. Um, but I don't think that my boyfriend and I have the proper lifestyle for a cat. Uh, our house is full of basically dangerous art supplies and things on shelves and uh, 70s collectibles and stuff. So it's not really the place for a cat to be. Maybe in the future we'll adopt an adult cat. But being that uh, we have allergies and we have a lizard and we have fish, uh, probably not the right pet move for us. But getting to play with some kittens for a little while was the best. I took some video of the cats when we were visiting one day. And uh, one day I also drew them from life, which is difficult, right? Because they're always moving. So I have a few drawings here of one of the cats sleeping. Uh, her code name was Mothra, and uh, she was the laziest of the bunch. But the next time I went to visit them, I actually took photos of them with my phone so that I could draw them later. So that's what I'm going to do now. When you're learning to draw animals, you know, drawing from life can be frustrating, especially when the kittens want to um, bite your sketchbook uh, and play with, like, the, the bookmark and stuff like that. So... This was fun, uh, but I was only really drawing for about 10 minutes, uh, and then I gave up. Now, moving forward, I'll find a, a nice blank page over here. And I thought it would be nice to draw some of the cats in some fun colors from the pictures that I took on the, on the last day we saw the kittens before they went back to the shelter to be adopted. And they will all get adopted really fast. I wouldn't be surprised if... They already all have families because they're cute, they're soft, and uh, our friends did a good job uh, sort of socializing them, uh, both to humans uh, and to their dog. They have a German Shepherd mix, uh, and he's a big, gentle, big, gentle buddy, so the cats got used to dogs as well. Some of them really liked him, some of them were not fans. Um, but yeah, they're probably all adopted really fast. I wouldn't be surprised. But for fast moving critters like cats, um, sometimes it's definitely easier just to take a picture and draw them later. James Gurney just put up a new video about painting from life where he paints a dog and of course animals just even if they nap they're not going to nap for very long they're going to move in their sleep uh, and he, he talks about different ways that you can basically correct the mistakes that you make while the animal is moving around but that takes lots of practice it takes a lot of anatomical knowledge and you have to keep it up or else you get rusty so at this point I would definitely classify myself as rusty um, just for like, like especially for painting. Drawing, I guess I'm not as rusty because I've done it recently, but anyway, it's still a hard, it's a difficult skill to learn uh, and there's no one way to get really good at it too because animals will always move and that's just how it is. So one thing that even even looking at a photograph right like I'm thinking about the cat's skull underneath you know the animal the anatomical structure of of the animal 
um, because that lends a solidity, I think, to your drawing. You know, it shows that you know what you're doing and you you know what you're you're talking about. Um, I was once at the Museum of the Rockies and a paleontologist, Jack Horner, uh, came up to me while I was drawing and, and I wasn't very old at the time. I think I was maybe 20 or 21. Um, maybe I was 20 because I don't think we drank on that trip to the States. Um, so I must have been 20 and I was just a college student and I was sitting drawing a dinosaur and he came up to me and he said, and of course, like I knew who he was because I'm a nerd. Um, but he asked me, do you know what that's called? That dinosaur that you're drawing? And I was like, oh God, I better not say the wrong dinosaur name. So I said, it's a Diplodocus, right? <laughs> and he was like, yes, if you're going to draw something, you better know what it's called. <laughs> Which was like, it's a silly, it's a silly thing to say. And of course you don't need to know, like, I'm not going to go out and ID every tree that I draw. That's ridiculous. But, um, the sort of, the, the sentiment, the sentiment I think stands, you know, you should know generally what you're drawing and, and, and how it works. Obviously that takes time. And the first time you draw a cat, you got no clue what's underneath all that fur. But, um, Anyway, I, I saw some paintings on on a trip to the city last week. I had to do some errands and there were like electrical boxes that had horses painted on them. And I looked at them and I was like, wow, that person does not know what a horse skull looks like because, you know, they had all of these details uh, of the horse, like details that would define uh, the tendons and the muscle structure and stuff like that, but they, they were all slightly off, like slightly in the wrong place, which made this horse portrait look really like lumpy and sort of a little bit flaccid, like it had all the right details in the wrong places, if that makes sense. So uh, that's <laughs> that's basically why it's important to, to do your research if, if you're going to be making art about animals. Uh, and again, not judging anybody who's not at that point yet. It takes time. Uh, I'm still a learner. But yeah, since, since I'm drawing cats today, I thought I would just bring it up. This is a, this is a draw with me video, by the way. I don't know if you guys uh, noticed. <laughs> I'm just going to draw and talk, um, which I thought would be nice to do. I've been doing sort of different videos um, recently and uh, I hope you've been enjoying them. It's, I don't know, it's sometimes difficult to do content that I put work into and then it doesn't get a lot of views. Um, I have a lot of subscribers and to anyone who's new, anyone who's been here for a while, thank you so much for following me on this platform. I think it's it's so awesome and there's something like really personal about YouTube even though it's also very impersonal. Anyway, thank you so much to all my subscribers, but what I'm trying to say is that subscriber count really does not correlate to views. And it certainly does not correlate to watch time. So compared to my subscriber count, I get very few views. And, you know, like, I don't know why that is. It, maybe it's my thumbnails. Uh, they're just not popping out in people's subscription boxes. Maybe a lot of people followed a long time ago and they just don't watch YouTube anymore. Like, who knows? You know, it's all a big sort of mystery. Um, but yeah, I find that my sketchbook videos do really well, uh, and then draw with me videos, like they do okay and stuff. So anyway, I'm just trying to navigate the mysterious world of internet income. But also at the same time, like I, I fully and freely admit that I'm a lazy person and I don't do as much like 
optimization uh, of like, you know, like tags and uh, search engine optimization and stuff like that. I don't do as much of that as I could. So I'm approaching this as sort of like a lazy, like laissez-faire uh, approach to YouTube. So that might also be my problem. That's probably my problem. And it's not like it's like a problem, but it's just something that I've been mindful of recently. I think that's a pretty cute little drawing. Now I'll pick uh, I'll pick the next photo I want to draw now. So one thing that I've also been working on recently is making my own watercolor paint. And I've talked about this before. I even made a little video about the first first try that I did, but basically I'm getting really close to launching that on my Etsy store. And when I do launch it, I will likely, um, I'll announce it on Instagram first. Sorry, I'm also like drawing cat paws. I zoned out. Uh, I'll announce it on Instagram and I might also, I'll announce it on the community tab here. So hopefully you'll see that. I also do want to do sort of a video about it, um, but I'm not sure if I'll align that with the actual launch. I guess I will, that would make sense, right? But basically they're almost ready to be launched and sold so that other people can try them out, which is exciting. Uh, and I hope you'll like them. They're sort of, they're not perfect. And that's, I think, part of the charm of them, you know, cause I'm grinding the pigments I, myself and they're coming from the ground and there's like, the only quality control is what I can do by eye basically. So making sure that I pick rocks that are the same uh, hue and the same consistency and stuff. And that doesn't account for what sort of inherent compositional differences they might have internally, like structurally, you know, chemically. Because I, I don't know. Um, But yeah, so they're they're all a little bit different. They're all they're they're sisters, not twins, or I guess sisters, not clones, because there's a lot of them. Um, and they're mineral paints, so they're they have a different texture to most paint. Uh, and I'll have to I'll make that really clear in the product descriptions when I put them up because. I don't want anybody to buy them and think like it's <laughs> they're gonna be a dream to paint with. They're a bit weird. They're unique and they're special and uh, they're not mass manufactured product controlled type paints. Um, they're an experiment basically. I am not a master paint maker. I have been making paint for, I don't know, a couple months maybe and that's it. Uh, but by selling them, I will be able to fund more paint and get better at it. So that's basically like my reason for, for selling them. Uh, aside from, you know, I live in a capitalist country and I need money to be happy and comfortable and less anxious. So... Yeah, anyway, they'll they'll improve uh, and down the line I may also uh, raise the costs as they become a better product. But I think they'll be fun and I really 
I really love the color way that I have for them. Right now there's three colors. There's a coal black, so that would be like a carbon black, because coal is honestly just carbon. Um, that might be wrong. Don't quote me on that. But uh, yeah, so there's a coal, coal black. There's a ironstone iron oxide. So that's a warm brown, a natural uh, iron pigment. And then there is a Badlands brick pink, which is a, basically it's a potter's pink. It's a, it's a clay based pink um, from the old bricks that were part of the uh, foundations of old mines because people used to mine the coal. They don't anymore. Um, demand died down and obviously it's a dangerous, dangerous profession. So uh, yeah, they, the bricks come from the mining infrastructure and then I grind them up to make the paint. So there's a black, a brown and like a peachy beigey pink and I just think they go so nicely together and they're so pretty in the, in the, the palettes and I can't wait to show you basically. I have 15 pans sitting on my counter that I was working on. They're almost done. I think they need one or one and a half ish more pours. Uh, just to finish them off and then they have to dry and cure but then I'm basically just waiting on getting the branding stickers that I ordered which have been shipped so they should arrive fairly soon and there's another cat there was one male cat in the litter. Uh, his name is Trevor and he was a bit of a troublemaker. Um, so this is, this is Trevor. Maybe I'll do another portrait now uh, in the corner here. And so maybe while I draw this one, I'll zoom in for a second. Hold on. All right. So I'll, I'll just explain a little bit of, I guess, my thought process in terms of drawing kitty faces. I did something similar a while back for drawing human faces from reference. Um, and I use basically the same, same principles uh, for drawing animal faces. But just a little bit different. So I started with the outline of the cat's face. So this will give you the top of the skull and the cheekbones basically where the cheekbones are because they swoop down under the eyes like that. That's called the zygomatic arch and on predators like cats and dogs it's very important and it gives them that cute and then we have the chin which is of course the the lower jaw the mandible and the nose the nose is actually not fully bone uh, like humans they have a cartilaginous front to their nose it's called the renarium uh, but you follow that up and then you, you do get the bridge of the nose, which will be about here. And cats, I find, are often built on triangles or diamond shapes. Uh, that's how I like to sketch them out anyway. So you can see I've made sort of a triangle for the, uh, 
for the nose there and also a bit of a diamond for the, the, the tops of the lips. Now this is a kitten so it's got pretty big eyes. This nose should probably be a bit smaller actually um, or maybe the ears should also be bigger. So I'll just extend them around the outside and once I do the shading and stuff it won't matter as much. I'm using pencil crayon uh, so it's not erasable. And then from from the eye, there's sort of like a an upward swoop to the to the, to where it joins up with the ear, if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense. So there's that, and then we'll put the pupil in, kind of looking down like that. <laughs> it's a cute picture. And then we'll do the other eye. Even the eyes on a cat are sort of like a rounded diamond shape, if you think about it. And then yeah, I'm gonna have to move the, the skull up a little bit. I find that it's easier to move the top of the head than the bottom of the head because there's less going on at the top, if that makes sense. And then once I start putting in uh, this cat's little stripes, uh, it's, it's not gonna matter too much that there's extra lines under there. It's a little messy, but it's also like, it's more of an impression, you know? It's a sketch, it's not line art, if that makes sense, so. Got that, and then there's... And whiskers are always important on, on cats. If you feel like your drawing doesn't look finished, just make sure that you add added the whiskers. Uh, same goes for basically any mammal, even horses and deer and stuff. They all have whiskers. And if you can hear a scratching noise, that's my pet lizard. He is having his aerobics. Anyway, that's basically it, is like finding the landmarks on the, on the animal, filling out the, the form, and it'll generally look like a, a, a cat now. Uh, it's not going to fit on the, on the page because I drew it in the corner, but the, in the picture I'm also petting this cat's tummy. Hence the big surprised expression. It's like, oh my god, what are you doing? Uh, so that's cute. <laughs> That's really cute. I guess we need some more blue drawings to fill this out. I'm gonna have some coffee. Try to find a picture. I'll draw. I'll draw some more uh, full body kitties. Okay, so I'll draw this quite small over here so that we can get the whole cat in. But basically, she's sitting and she's looking over her shoulder at the same time. I want to get, this is going to be the back foot, and this is the little front paws here, and her tail. Sort of like that. One thing also, um, when you're drawing young animals, basically uh, this mostly applies to puppies and kittens because of their tails, um, but if you draw them with a wigglier tail, they'll look younger because uh, their bones, their skeletons are more flexible at a young age. That's why puppies look so floppy. Um, they basically, they have more range of movement and uh, more cartilage and their bones aren't finished 
uh, solidifying, uh, just like humans, because um, they're still growing. So if you give them a wiggly tail, they're going to look the proper age. I saw a puppy on the street today and like I didn't even have to get nearby to know it was a puppy because his tail was like blah, 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 like total puppy tail like so floppy. And since the cat is looking sort of like around this is going to be one ear and then the second ear is right here. It's a bit of a weird angle for the ears. But once I get the little face in, I think it'll make more sense. And just like a tiny nose. And the eye is sort of there. And of course, the whiskers. So now that I have that blocked in, obviously it's not, it's not the greatest yet, but give me a moment to try to sharpen this pencil. It keeps breaking. Uh, welcome to artist's life. Okay, we've got one sort of sharp edge on this now. That's, that's the best we can do. So I'll start to uh, solidifying the establish, uh, what am I trying to say? I will start defining the relationships between the, the shapes and the proportions. So I've got to make these uh, front paws a little bit bigger. I gotta make the butt a little bit bigger now too. It's always tricky because I find like when when I draw the head last, I have to do more adjustments to the body. But when I draw the head first, I have to draw more adjustments to the head. So I don't know. There, it's it's so hard to get it right the first time. So usually you're not gonna, and, and for every life drawing session I do, I'll flip back to my other page here. So like this one turned out good, this one turned out good. And then I have these ones where just like, it's just ears and then I gave up. So like you get a lot of false starts I find when you're sketching from life and you just gotta be fine with that and not get discouraged. Now this kitten was very like, like puffy, like werewolf, werewolf type fluff. Uh, she was cute, but she was also definitely a troublemaker. That's kind of cute. Maybe we can find one more long cat to draw in the corner here. This is sort of looking down on a kitten that's looking at the ground. So we're gonna see some of its spine and most of its limbs are obscured, which is a weird thing to draw, but obviously animals stand this way sometimes. So 
it's good practice to draw strange poses. I took a course on schoolism once that was taught by Terrell Whitlatch, who did the character designs, uh, the creature designs, pardon, for Star Wars The Phantom Menace, which is one of my favorite movies. And uh, one of the assignments at the end was basically just to draw weird poses like this, or like animals cleaning themselves, uh, animals uh, sleeping funny, basically to make sure that we knew how to draw the stranger poses that critters get up to, because they do get up to them. Like this is going to look pretty abstract and not a ton like a cat, um, but it is a cat, okay? You get that paw there, there's the back of the head, a few whiskers. There's the back paw, lots of fluff, and the spine curving away from us, and the space between the shoulder blades. I'm actually going to sneak in another paw here, even though I can't see this paw on the reference, I think it'll make the drawing a bit better. And then the tail is going over here. So anyway, this isn't how you would draw a kitten for like a pet portrait <laughs> by any means, but it is a pose that cats get up to. So I'll get some of his stripes in there too. Sorry, I have that off the screen. Anyway, I'll get some stripes on there. I'm going to need more coffee after this for sure. Maybe I'll microwave mine. I think it got cold. Anyway, I think overall that is a fun spread. I'll put the date down here. What day is it? And there you have it. Hey, Cicero. Cicero. Shh. All right, and there we have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Cause they, they're, this one wants food, but all of her siblings keep not yeah. letting her have any. <laughs> yeah. You, you can have some now. <laughs> yeah, so you have to just sort of like encourage some of them. Share. Oh, here, here. <laughs> you can also give them half of it now and then take it away and give them the rest later. Yeah, she's still gonna eat it all. She's a little bugger. <laughs> Me. Clean your toes. How's your week been? Not too bad. Hot excellent. Oh, too well. How's your house? Out, right? Pretty toasty. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We're like, we don't have any air conditioning. This fan works to move hot air around. Yes, exactly. So we just get Slightly more. They're nice though, close range. Yes, they help, especially if you stand there like a gorilla. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how we do it. We put a lot of fans in there. Yeah. <laughs> you can't get out. Can't fail. <laughs> can't fail. <laughs> <laughs> Unlikely. Now you're stuck.
Yeah. 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 Yeah.